It's a big fight weekend here in Las Vegas. UFC 300 is here, plus the PFL is geared up for the second event of the season. We're breaking down the fight card so you know exactly what's going down. Sin City Beat starts right now. From Las Vegas, this is Sin City Beat. Hello and thanks for joining us on Sin City Beat. Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Mike Davis. Sin City Beat is the show that dissects the Vegas sports world through the eyes of the sports reporters and difference makers leading the charge. On today's show, we're breaking down a huge fight weekend here in Las Vegas. Basically, it's a weekend filled with champions and title holders. That's because Friday night, the Professional Fighters League features multiple season champions. Then on Saturday, UFC presents a landmark card filled with a dozen current and former belt holders here to help us shape this out is Case Kiefer, assistant sports editor of the Las Vegas <laughs> Sun. There you go, some jabs there. We have our very own sports reporter and anchor, Vince Sapienza with Fox 5 Las Vegas, and a very, very special guest, Biagio Ali Walsh, 25-year-old lightweight in the PFL who made his debut in February and sits with a record of 1-0. That's a good record right there great to have you guys with us so let's kick this baby off okay so ufc 300 there's a lot of talk out there calling this event a landmark fight card or a night of champions something like that but others are saying it's sort of underwhelming there was an expectation that conor mcgregor could have made his return to the octagon something like that instead the main event features the brazilian alex Pereira defending his title against the former champ jamal hill so vince let me start with you this hype surrounding the card was there's supposed to be more hype, and where are we at right now? Well, the hype was high, right? As you mentioned, the notorious Conor McGregor was supposed to be the headliner. If not, maybe John Jones. Some even were saying that it would not live up to the bill if they didn't get Conor and John Jones on the same card. Neither are on it. That being said, now that the dust is settled, this is an incredible fight card. UFC 300 is fantastic. Dana White promised that the first fight of the night would be that of former champions fighting. These are early prelims. These are guys that have not fought, not on a pay-per-view, in years in Devison Figueredo and Cody Garbrandt. So it's two exciting fighters in the bantamweight division that are kicking off this card. I mean, the, the amount of storylines are endless, but to your point, 26 yeah. fights, 12 different current or formal, former title holders on this card. This is going to be a banger of a card. Now it's just up to the athletes living up to the hype. Uh, uh, Biagio, you were even saying as a fighter, this seems like a fighter's fight this whole weekend. You even were saying you're having guys coming over the house mm -hmm. to have some pizza. How excited are you even just to take in the action? Absolutely. I love fight weekends. You know, um, uh, my family's been in boxing for a long time, so we used to always have fight nights at the house. We'd go to our friend's house and have fight nights, and uh, like around that time was when Floyd, Pretty Boy Floyd, and like uh, Manny Pacquiao was like yeah, doing yeah. their thing. So, yeah, I'm super excited. It's gonna be a fight-filled weekend, like you said. And Case, what do you think at covering this sport for a long time? I mean, underwhelming to you or not so much? Uh, absolutely not. I'm glad I don't have to cross hairs with Bianchi. <laughs> I hate that I have to agree with Vince, but he's exactly right. Uh, the UFC, I feel like they're taking the heat, some heat. They made themselves an easy target by really playing up the main event. It, it didn't come through with that big headliner, but to me, every time I will take the 13 fights they have on the card where every single one is a banger, I kind of fell in love with this sport because you could get there at 2 o'clock, sit in your seat, and just have great action beginning to end. It's kind of gotten away from that a little bit on the UFC side. I feel like in recent years they have so many cards. I've seen the back to the roots. I think they're using it as a promotional tool. That to me is what this card is. Every single fight should be great. I'll take that over one big headliner any day. You talk about, you can look at this card up and down, right? Yeah. You, you talk about Holly Holm, future legend, not on the pay-per-view. And she's fighting a UFC debutante, Kayla Harrison. I know we'll get to her later in the show. But then you look at a guy like Jim Miller. Right. This is a guy. Mm -hmm. The most fights ever in UFC, UFC 100, history. UFC 200, and now UFC 300. That's he crazy. was so amped for this. He said, I'm going to retire after UFC 300. We talked to him yesterday. He's like, no, I got a few more in me. Now he wants, he's got another goal. I mean, you. Yes, this was hyped as a massive car week. Again, we go back to the Connor thing. It didn't happen. But as you get into fight week, guys, and I think we can all kind of feel it right now, you just keep looking up and down the car, and you're like, 
when do you go to the bathroom? When do you take, right. when do you take a break? When do you go to the concession stands? You don't. I mean, this is one of those that you can't get out of your seat because you don't know who's going to show up and show out. The BMF title's on the line with Gaethje and Holloway. That's the third on the paper on the it's, pay-per-view. It's That's crazy, crazy, the entire lineup from prelims to the main card. So we're going to be diving in a little later on into some of those exact matchups. But I got to ask you, Biagio, I mean, you know, the, the, the mood. If we're so amped up for this weekend, what is it like to be in a fighter's position as you're looking forward to a fight a day out, a day or two out? What is that like, the mentality of a fighter? Um, well, when I'm not fighting and I got, like, you know, a big fight weekend like this, it's, I'm super excited because not only do I get to watch some awesome fights, but I also get to watch and study, you know, my craft. I get to watch certain fighters uh, do uh, tactics and certain things that they do, and, and, th and that's why it's an art. You know, you get to watch other fighters do their thing, and you could kind of take notes and then uh, in implement it into your own game. So, like, for me as a fighter, when I see big cards like this, it, I also am thinking, like, I, this is a great way to study. I could watch some of the top guys do their thing and, and try to take some of the things that they do and implement it into my own game. See, I love hearing that. Case, if you had one element, one aspect, one fight, we have a minute left in this block. The number one thing you're looking forward to this weekend, what is it? Oh, there's so many. Uh, you mentioned the BMF title. I think that's right up there. I mean, Gaith G and Holloway, that should just be an absolute war. Uh, also, I think that there, there's a bigger women's fight. There's one for a title, but I think uh, Kayla Harrison, former PFL champ going into the UFC to take on Holly Holm, an all-time great. That should be fun as well. Yeah, guys, there's a, a lot of firsts in this UFC 300 this weekend. First time two former UFC champs fight in an open bout on a UFC car. We got the first time two Chinese fights. Fighters are clashing for UFC title, and we also got the first time a fighter is uh, changing weight classes for a BMF fight uh, title fight. So that's Max Holloway doing that as he's moving up to lightweight from featherweight. We got a lot more going into this entire show. We're breaking everything down, and regardless of that sentiment of UFC 300, it still features plenty of fights that are featuring many champs, as we mentioned. Next up, we're breaking down the most interesting fights on that card. We're going X's and O's. Stick around. You're watching Sin City Beat. Welcome back to Sin City Beat. It's go time. So let's take a look at the main card for UFC 300. First off, the main card opens with a middleweight bout between three-time NCAA Division I National Wrestling Champion from Penn State, Bo Nickel, who is undefeated at 2-0 in the UFC. He's a rising star in the sport. He's taken on Cody Brundage, who turned pro in 2019, but is also a former college wrestler. Uh, Biagio, you were a running back in college at UC Berkeley and, and at UNLV. Uh, how much of an advantage do you think it is having that collegiate background in the wrestling ring when you're translating that to MMA? I think uh, what translates a lot is just the athleticism. You know, there's a lot of football athletes that are just great athletes. Um, they can transition into different sports very well. Um, I think that that is probably just the biggest thing, and, and the common denominator is just the athleticism that football players have. Um, you know, I had no wrestling background. I had no combat background before I got into MMA. But I did have the, you know, the football and the athleticism, you know, performing in front of a lot of people and the ESPN and the, the lights, camera and, and action stuff. So um, I think that that, for me personally, has helped me translate into the sport. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about this Bo Nickel because it seems like this guy's really, I mean, he's even being uh, like uh, attributed to like Jesus Christ in some yeah. of these. <laughs> Which uh, he did not like that he comment, He didn't by like the that way. comment. And, you know, so there's a lot of hype surrounding mm -hmm. him, you know. Vince, tell me, I, I mean, to be a three-time Division One NCAA collegiate wrestling champion, yeah. that's a pretty big deal. you got to be pretty technically sound to do that. Yeah. How excited are you as as a prospect for well, this guy? I'm, I'm very excited to see him. He's the, he's the biggest betting favorite on the car, biggest betting favorite in, in UFC history, actually. Cody Prundage is the biggest underdog the UFC has ever seen, so that's massive. But Biagio can speak to this you know, more so than me, but that, that difference, when you are a three-time NCAA champion, the, the disparity between the next guys, it, it's a big deal. It's, it's large. So when you come into the UFC, you already have this above average base that you're mm -hmm. setting up. And the guy can throw him. I mean, the guy can throw him. But I, I have to say, so he didn't like the, the Jesus Christ comparison. He, he shot that down very quickly. Yeah. But he did say, he goes, because there's a rule in, in MMA, UFC, if there's a guy plus 500 or more, you just bet the underdog because 
and anything know. can happen, right? But he said he doesn't get into betting. He doesn't know about odds, but he does know when he gets in, in the octagon, he's there to win. So if you want to dictate any of yeah. your betting needs on that, he's going to win. Cody Brundage, his opponent, though, boy, is he ready for this moment. Talking to him yesterday, he was – as confident as I've ever seen an underdog, as big of an underdog as he was. He's won his last two fights. He's a guy has been on the Contender Series. He knows no. kind of what this is all about. That's going to be a fun fight, but Bo Nickel, he's a machine right I now. I like mm -hmm. to see that on the main card, opening everything up. Uh, Case, let me ask you about this. So Dana White called uh, Max Holloway the greatest featherweight of all time in uh, UFC. Now he's obviously got to fight uh, lightweight to go up against Gaethje. Uh, what do you think about that fight? Uh, a lot of interesting elements there. Yeah, I mean, these are two of the most exciting guys to watch. I think it's kind of hard to argue at this point. I mean, with Holloway's reign and all that he's done in the sport, he's definitely in the conversation of the best 145er of all time. And now the division's kind of opened up again. New champion, Ilya Teporia. I feel like Max Holloway now feels like he had all those fights against Alexander Volkanovsky. He's out of the picture now at the very top. I feel like Holloway now feels like he goes out and beats Gaethje. He's a slight underdog in the betting odds, too. He goes out and gets this win. He's right back in the title picture, so it could revitalize his career again, kind of that like he's been around so long, it's hard to believe. And uh, these guys are going to stand and trade, and it is going to be a spectacle. I think this is, uh, they're calling it the people's main event, and I can't disagree. <laughs> this you, is it. you know, Biagio, to me, you know, give us the insider's perspective when it comes to kind of changing weight classes. Me, I have a burrito at Chipotle, I feel like I change an entire weight class, especially if I go in on the guacamole. But tell us, you know, what is that like to change weight classes, confidence, all that kind of stuff? Is it as big of a deal as an outsider like me would think, or is it pretty easy to make I, that transition? Yeah, I think when you go up, it's, it's definitely better for the fighter, um, just because it's a lot closer to the weight that they walk around. Um, you know, when you get fighters that cut too much, it could be very detrimental to your performance. So, you know, when you get a fighter that, that moves up in weight, uh, they definitely feel a lot, a lot better. You know, I, I, at least from what I've heard, you know, I haven't heard any fighters say, I don't, I don't like uh, going up or something. But um, yeah, I think that Max is gonna, he looks filled out. Like if you've seen him, he looks big, he looks healthy. Um, back to like Sadabu, like he's going up two weight classes, you know, he, he looks better and, and healthy. and. Uh, so yeah, it, it's a real thing that, that when you go up in weight, when you're cutting so much, that you feel a lot better. Okay, and lastly, we got a minute left here. We got to obviously talk main event, light heavyweight title bout, uh, Jamal Hill, uh, Alex Perea. Uh, obviously, Hill, Achilles tear. Mm -hmm. He hasn't fought since that Achilles tear when he actually had that title. Vince, I mean, is there a way you're leaning for this fight? It's hard to go against Alex Perea right now. I mean, the, the dude's a machine. The dude walks through everybody. He did it against Adesanya. Yeah, he, I mean, he's a monster. I mean, flat out, he's a monster. That being said, Jamal Hill is built a little different. I, I mean, he may not have the look of a machine. He may, but this guy knocks out people in different ways. Yeah. And his teammate Bobby Green talked about it yesterday saying, he doesn't look like he's going to do it, but the way he turns and the way he moves and the power he has, I, I, I don't think it's as big of a, a leap to think that he'll come away with the title than some seem to believe. I'm going to act with more conviction. Give me Jamal Hill, the underdog. I think it's going to be a great fight. They're both going to land, and I trust. I think Hill's durability is a little bit better, even coming off that uh, Achilles. I, I think Pereira, he, we've seen some chin issues with him. I think Hill can catch him. All right. Biagio, Hill, Pereira? It's not going the distance. I know that. <laughs> you know, these dude, both of these guys got power. Um, I, I'm super excited for that fight. I, I honestly have no idea with that one. All right. <laughs> There's a lot of them I don't have any hey, idea. <laughs> there you go. I don't have an idea either. Listen, the good stuff is going to just keep coming up. After a short break, we're talking everything PFL. Hang tight. We're on the verge of PFL's second event of the 2024 season. After only five seasons in existence, the PFL is gaining some steam as the league features a sports season format featuring a regular season, playoffs, and a championship. And each winner of the six weight divisions receive a million dollar prize. April 12th at Virgin Hotels Las Vegas, two bouts will be going down. The main event features uh, 2022 light heavyweight champion Robert Wilkinson facing off against Tom Breeze and the lightweight. Card has Clay Collar going up against former lightweight champion Pat Ricky Pitbull. Now, Biagio, let's start with you and the main event, uh, Breeze and Wilkinson. Uh, how do you like this matchup? What do you think about those two guys? I think it's a good matchup. I think they both have heavy hands. Um, I had seen Wilkinson fight a couple years ago, and man, it was exciting. Um, 
Yeah, th that one's a toss-up for me. <laughs> Again, you know, <laughs> I, it's one of those fights kind of like Pereira and, and Hill. Like, both dudes have power, and they could land at any time. So, yeah, I'm super excited for that one. Okay, and then, Vince, uh, let's talk a little Impa and Polizzi. Impa Kasangane, I mean, former UFC guy, you know, never really got quite a run with the UFC, but boy, has he found his form mm -hmm. with the PFL, 2023 champ, obviously. Uh, and he talks about that million dollars last year changing his life. I mean, he's 5-1 and one in his last six fights. This is a guy who's found his footing, found his form, and really, you know, the PFL, as you know, it's a different, you're not just going out there to win. You, you got to win certain ways. You got to strategize and do certain things. I think it's fantastic. And what does that say about the PFL? How strong strong do they feel about their product and the fighters that are in there to go up, not necessarily go up against, but have it the same weekend here in Vegas with yeah. UFC 300, making it maybe the biggest MMA weekend in Vegas history, which that says a lot, no? Case, I love the whole season format. Tell, I mean, what do you, how big of a, of a deal is that in terms of attracting maybe more of a casual fan like me. Yeah, it, it is really cool. It's a format we all understand. I think from talking to fighters, they love it. Biagio could probably speak to it better than me, but knowing you're going to have these four dates, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's big. And, you know, we all love the tournament format. I mean, March Madness just got over. I think bringing that to MMA, I know it's the regular season, then the playoffs, but you get semifinals, you get amped up, you get to see those two and to make a championship matchup. I, I love the setup. And Vince, to make this full circle, Kayla Harrison, a yeah. PFL experience, this yeah. is one of the things that you told me in the back office you were most excited about on the UFC yeah. situation is her she's making her UFC debut. I said it to you and I'll say it again here. I think UFC 300 is going to be the car that we look back on in years and be like that's where the greatest of all time in the women's and any really? women's division happened with Kayla Harrison. She is You're saying the GOAT. The GOAT. I, I know the GOAT gets thrown around a lot guys mm -hmm. uh, but Kayla Harrison, everybody's talking about can she cut down the weight going from PFL to, to the divisions here in the UFC. She is a one-woman wrecking crew. I mean, she was the hottest free agent a few years ago. The UFC tried to get her, couldn't do it. PFL landed her. What'd she do? She go won a couple PFL championships. She's a yeah. two-time gold medalist, former roommate, teammate of Ronda Rousey. She is and is about greatness. And uh, I think she is going to put on an absolute show. She's not even on the pay-per-view. That's how big this 300 card is. She's going against a future UFC Hall of Fame legend yeah. in Holly Holm, someone who's been there that's done it. I, I think sky's the limit for Kayla Harrison. I think she's the new face of the UFC. I love that. And uh, real quickly, Biagio, just tell us, you know, from a fighter's perspective, attracting an audience, people loving PFL. I mean, just tell us from an audience perspective why we should be so excited about what's happening this weekend and just with PFL in general. Yeah, you know, PFL has great some great talent. You know, the obviously the merger with PFL and Bellator. Now the roster is even bigger. You know, now you got even more talent. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's super exciting. Um, there's going to be a lot of good fights Friday and a lot of good fights Saturday, and uh, I'm super excited for them. All right, guys, coming up. We all know Vegas and fights, fights and Vegas. It goes hand in hand. But what does the future of fighting in Vegas look like? We have the answer after these words. For the longest time, the entertainment capital of the world had one calling card when it came to sports. That was boxing. Now, as the entertainment capital of the world morphs into the sports capital of the world, what does that mean for the future of fighting in Las Vegas? I want to start with you, Biagio, real quick, because Biagio Ali Walsh. We got to talk about this. I mean, your grandfather, the great Muhammad Ali, that comes with a lot of expectation, but a lot of uh, beautiful, uh, you know, it must be be a beautiful thing as well. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what do you think your grandfather would have felt about MMA and the rise of this as a sport and you kind of partaking in this rather than boxing? Uh, I think he'd be super proud of what me and my brother are doing. My brother's a pro boxer and he's doing his thing. Um, he would be a huge sport, uh, a huge fan of the sport MMA, you know, um, especially around that time when like Conor McGregor was doing his thing in featherweight and he was doing all his talking and stuff. So he would have been a huge fan of the sport. Um, you know, he did do something in like 1976 where he had fought like a wrestler or something like that. So he's almost kind of like a pioneer for the idea of, you know, MMA, you know, which sport is the best, you know, the judo versus the karate guy, yeah. you know, et cetera. So I think he'd be a huge fan of the sport. And you were just saying off camera a little bit, the pressure. I can't imagine with the pressure of being a fighter and also having the name Ali, yeah. 
to your, your your name, people you said always came up to you, just wanted to fight once they found out you had yeah. that relation. What has that pressure been like for you? Oh, it's it's been something that it's been it's been there since I was a little kid. You know, like you know when people would find out they would want to box me and stuff and you know uh, even when I played football you know uh, some team would find out who I was related to that the linebackers would try to hit me harder just because of it so you know it was always there you know now participating in a combat sport the pressure is elevated for sure you know it's only me in that cage but you know it's only going to get worse you know the pressure is going to get more and more and more intense but I welcome all of it and I hope that you know that that pressure just creates a diamond out of me. Well, Case, you don't only float like a butterfly; you also sting like a bee, like <laughs> the great Muhammad Ali. Tell us uh, the future of fighting here in Las Vegas. You cover all the sports. Uh, it seems like I mean MMA, UFC, PFL. It's all on the rise. Yeah, for the record, those linebackers trying to tackle Biagio <laughs> failed. As someone who watched him a few times in high school, this guy was breaking Gorman, tackles left UNLV. and right. Um, he was a stud. <laughs> and I, for one, can't wait to see him uh, fight in Las Vegas someday. And I think it's just, you know, it's been the fight capital of the world for so many years, and I don't see that changing at all. I think all the biggest fights are going to be here because people want to come here. People associate Las Vegas with fighting. It's obviously great locationally. Um, the UFC is a tenant at T-Mobile Arena. I feel like people don't really know, so they're going to have their number of fights there. Uh, we've seen the PFL make a commitment here. Always going to be big boxing matches here. So I do not think Las Vegas is a status in the combat sports world is gotcha. at risk. It's unfortunate. We were going to talk about uh, Case's uh, World Star middle school uh, <laughs> bout video that was matriculating <laughs> on social media. Couldn't get the clearance. We couldn't get video. the clearance, so it's, it's an issue. But you talk about, us. Yeah, you talk about the rise of MMA. It is only going to get bigger and better. Boxing, as you said, mainstay here. But just remember, UFC is coming to the sphere. And when we talk about big events and we talk about high profile and all these different things, what Dana White is promising, we're going to see at the Sphere in September, is going to revolutionize the way we watch MMA and the future of the sport. Well, I had a great time with you guys as this great panel. Biagio, thank you. we want to thank you for being here. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you for You're my new favorite fighter right there. <laughs> Case, I also love you as a fighter as well. And my man, <laughs> Vince Sapienza. Guys, I'm Mike Davis. Thanks so much for joining us on Sin City Beat. We will see you next time.